Okay, I believe I was up to rule 205.29. Transfers of proceedings for disposition required documents. This is in the Family Court Rules 205. Whenever the court makes an order pursuant to 302.3 FCA, transferring a JD proceeding for disposition in family court in the county where a respondent resides, the clerk of the sending court shall immediately transmit by electronic means all available records concerning the case, including but not limited to the petition, fact-finding order, any reports regarding the respondent contained in the court file, transcript of the plea allocution by the respondent. I guess that should really be the admission allocution, but the court activity reports and any other orders made by the sending court. And if you don't work in family court, I believe that court activity reports is like the referee or judge's notes. Any documents or orders not immediately available shall be expeditiously prepared and forwarded by the sending court no later than 48 hours from the date of the transfer. Uh, 205.30, preliminary probation conferences and procedures for support. All right, they may be referred to the probation service, except if the petitioner is a commissioner for social services or a person receiving paternity and support services. The probation service shall be available to meet with the person potential respondent, and any other interested person no later than the next regularly scheduled court day. The probation service shall permit any person to have their lawyer come with them and shall not discourage any person from seeking to file a petition. Um, And then this all looks... Okay, so then we have at the first appearance at the conference by each of the persons, the probation service shall inform such person concerning the function and limitations the adjustment process, and that the purpose is to arrive at a voluntary agreement for support without filing a petition, that they can stop any time and go file a petition, that they are allowed to go file a support petition whenever they want. That seems to be a repeat. Oh, um, two actually says the person seeking to file a support petition is entitled to request that the probation service confer with everyone and then it says that if it's three says if it's not requested or subsequently declined they can go file the petition whenever they want four that the probation is not authorized to compel anyone to do anything the adjustment process five the adjustment process must commence within 15 days continue for two months and if the court allows then it can be an additional 60 days upon the consent of the petitioner or prospective petitioner. Six, if it's not successful, the persons get notified in writing. Seven, if it results in a voluntary agreement for support of the petitioner and the dependents, it gets reduced to writing, gets submitted to the family court for approval. If the court approves it without further hearing, the court enters the order for support. It's binding on all respects as a valid order. Unless the agreement is submitted to family court, family court shall not entertain a proceeding for enforcement if it's not complied with. Um, If the adjustment process is not commenced, the probation service shall give written notice to the person listed in sub B that it will not be commenced and the reasons therefore. Two, petitioner is allowed to go file the petition. Three, if applicable, adjustment process was not commenced on the ground that the court would not have jurisdiction over the case and the question of the court's jurisdiction may be tested by filing a petition. All right, then it goes into the duties and it basically says here, it appears that they may be able to arrive at a voluntary agreement for support and the adjustment process shall commence within 15 days from the date of request and shall include the per- person seeking to file a support petition, potential respondent, and any other person who wishes to participate. Um, then I think it goes on, and it's just a repeat of what I just read. Yeah. All right, then we go into support magistrates. This is all seems like it's in the Family Court Act already. Um, here we go with, this is sub C 
of Rule 205.32. This is, says, Selection of Support Magistrates. The District Administrative Judge or the Administrative Judge for the Courts in Nassau County or Suffolk County if Support Magistrate is authorized to serve in either of those counties. Um, or the Administrative Judge for the Family Court if it's going to be in New York City shall publish an announcement involving inviting applications from the bar in any of the following media, media, law journal, newspaper, of general circulation, or the UCS website, and communicate directly with bar associations in the affected county or counties and invite applicants to apply. Um, I really don't think that they're going to ask this stuff, but basically they have to, those other people have to like, um, you know, put it out there that there's availability for a support magistrate position, and then the fucking chief administrator makes the appointments. The fucking chief administrator just does the training and fixes their compensation. They get the same rules about travel expenses for reimbursement for non-judicial court employees in the state of New York. Um, 205.33. Supervising judge in the family court or a deputy administrative judge for the family court within New York City shall assign the magistrates as required by needs of court. 205.34. Referral of support magistrates. Um... A summons or warrant in support proceedings shall be made returnable by the clerk before a support magistrate in the first instance, unless otherwise provided by the court. A net worth statement prescribed by the fucking chief administrator shall be appended by the clerk to the summons to be served upon the respondent and shall be given to petitioner upon filing a petition. B. Whenever the parties are before judge of the court and supports an issue, the judge shall make an immediate order, either temporary or permanent, with respect to support. If a temporary order is made, the court shall refer issues of support to the support magistrate. C. This provides um, provisions shall apply to initial determinations, subsequent or modifications or violation proceedings, and support proceedings referred to the family court by Supreme Court pursuant to Part 6 of Article 4. All right, so then it goes into conduct of hearing. It's going to be another video.